everybody that sees the hat, y'all know what this is, man. It's Victory Monday. So shout out to my dog, my boy, Kevin, the closer, Harvick, strikes again. He's been hot. This, I mean, let me just tell you, it's the hat, bro. Ever since I bought the hat. It's getting worn in. Bro, bro ever since I bought the hat. <laughs> Two victories, one second place finish, bro. He is on fire right now. His car has been just, oh, it's beautiful. So obviously they were at the Brickyard this past weekend in, Indi in Indianapolis. And the unique thing about this track, so we talked about last week, Pocono, it was three, it was a, it's a triangle. They call it the tricky triangle mm -hmm. because the only track shaped like a triangle, you know what I'm saying? Three, three corners, right? Then we talked about how like Talladega, they got the big banks or, or excuse me, Bristol, they got like super big banks. So when you're driving up there, I mean, you can't even walk up there because of the, how steep it is. At the brickyard, it's all flat. No, no banks at all. So you got to be able to whip, whip, hand, hand, get in and out of the curves, right? So my boy Kevin Harvick doing what he does best. Mind you, this is this made his third victory at the brickyard. He won it last year as well. Yeah, that, but this that. year he did it in way more exciting fashion. So obviously him and the boy Denny Hamlin, right? I'll tell you, they've been going back and forth of lately, man. It's, it's been really exciting watching how this thing gets heated up. So Harvick is winning. This is probably going into like the last... 30 to 50 laps, like that range, right? Harvick's at the lead, man. He's doing his thing, wheeling, dealing, getting nasty with it. Denny Hamlin, though, is, has the faster car. So from a time standpoint, even though Harvick is winning, Denny Hamlin's laps are a faster pace. But because, obviously, Harvick has the clean air and he's able to cut him off at the corners, he's able to maintain it. So they're trying to pit. Now, now this is the strategy part, right? Because it's to the point where, hey, we know we both got to pit. This is going to be our last pit for the race. But who pits first? Do you pit? You think you can get around before he can get out of the pit? Or do you think you can pit and get back out there and all these other things, right? So communication mishap. Denny Hamlin comes into pit. Harvick was supposed to come into pit as well. But they said that two guys were talking on the microphone at the same time. Harvick doesn't hear it. So now Harvick ends up having to stay out an extra lap while Hamlin gets a chance to pit. So now by the time Harvick comes back around, tries to go into pit, he has a slow pit as well. Mm. Tires, they, they it's just it just wasn't crisp as it should have been. Denny Hamlin now takes the lead. So now, man, we're, we're watching this race, and I'm just like, dude, my boy, man, he was rolling. Critical point. He was doing so good. I'm like, man, and the only reason we're losing right now is a mishap on us. Like, this sucks. And it was no cars in front to, like, slow him down because a lot of times, like, we talked about when you're in front, you get the clean air. So your car is going to be flying. But now we're like, dang, if nobody comes in front of him to slow him down, how can we catch Denny Hamlin? So it was giving me flashbacks of the week before because literally Saturday Pocono, uh, Harvick was in front, Hamlin behind, couldn't catch him. Then on Sunday, Hamlin was in front, Harvick's, uh, Harvick's behind, he can't catch him. So we're like, dang, like it's about to happen again. This sucks. And now there, it becomes less than what nine laps. Just at the nine lap mark, they start going in the announcers. They do what they do. <laughs> sometimes you call it great. Sometimes you call it a jinx. They start going into this whole story of how Denny Hamlin has always been frustrated because this is the one race he hasn't won. Wow. This is the one race that he's wow. won is so bad. This is the one time that he's going to be able to check off the box and say that he can make history in terms of winning. Uh, I think it's, uh, it might have been Daytona or another race in the Brickyard 400 in the same season. Suppose it, it doesn't happen. I think it's Talladega. He said he had a chance to win both of them. So we're like, oh, wow. man, they're they're gassing it up. And I'm just over here miserable laying on my wife like, dang, like You thought dang. it was over? I, I was having my doubts. I'm like, I know he's the closer, <laughs> but the thing was, it wasn't no traffic. So if it's no traffic, it's nothing going to slow him down. So literally every lap in the thing was this. When Harvick had got his new tires, because he had been out there longer now, mind you, we knew that... So just give you context. They say, all right, the way you can have your car set up is a tighter car, a looser car, you could trim it down. So when they trimmed it down, they had on really good tires, but they lowered it. So in and out of curves, you're not going to be good, but on a straight way, you're going to be able to fly. Cause it's like from an aerodynamic standpoint, your car is built just to go fast right now, but it only works as long as your tires are good. So we know the longer the race is going on, the worse his tires are going to be, which means the worse he's going to be. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, the clock's ticking. Wow. I'm like, man, this sucks. Like, oh. <gasps> and then something crazy happened. What happened? As they're jinxing my man going on this, this pomp and circumstance of how Denny Hamlin is going to be able to overcome it and win the brickyard and do something historic, he wipes out. <laughs> he just what? randomly randomly turns and crashes, bro. What, he ends what up did getting, they say happened? He ended up getting a flat tire. Yeah, his, his, his right front tire went flat on a curve. And the thing was, this is probably the fifth car that did the exact same thing at the exact same corner. I'm talking like smack the wall hard. Throughout the whole race. Yeah, yeah. We saw wow. like multiple cars do it like recently as well. Whose fault is that? 
uh, it, they said it just happens sometimes with the wear, just depending on like which stage you are on those tires, if they were a good set of tires or not, in terms of like the, the, um, because they say they predetermine which tires are going to go. So if the set wasn't as good or it could have been anything, but they said ultimately wow. the wear caused the right tire to go flat. And he, I'm talking like he's by himself and he just smacks the wall. Bam! Fire comes out. Like no. it, it was crazy, dude. It was crazy. So even Harvick, Harvick said like when he passed him, he was like, man, we were excited because we were going to get in first, but we knew like, yo, that could be bad because of how hard he hit. Shout out to the technology at NASCAR though. They, uh, apparently like they changed the Brickyard's, um, barrier. So it used to be just cement. Now they have these like foam, like triangles behind the barrier. So it's supposed to give them a little bit of cushion, but bro, he hit that wall so hard. I was like, yo, this is out of control, bro. But it ultimately opened the door for the closer to take he, over. He ended up being good, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay. was good. He was good. But it was crazy because that happened. But earlier in the race, they hit, it was a crash on pit road. One of the crewmen got hit. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts, bro. It was nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, like like literally, you see the crew guy running over to the change the tire. Crash coming. He gets hit. He like flails out, and he's like trying to scoot out the way for the other cars crash. It was nuts, bro. So this is the part that I saw. Mm -hmm. It was like the literally the last two or three laps. Yeah. But they headlined it as overtime. overtime. Yes. Why was it overtime? All right. So the way it works is this. Um, anytime, like traditionally during the race, when there's a crash, they have what they call caution. A caution flag comes out. So the cars are still driving around. Those still count as laps. So even though you're not racing full speed, everyone's you, in the position they were in. Yeah, but it's still taking a lap off. Every yeah. time you go around, it takes a lap off. So when he crashed, they ended up going into caution for like four or five laps. And that was over. Yeah. So technically it would you but you're not allowed to end the race under caution. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they have overtime, which is a green white checkered. So literally you get the green flag to say you can go. White flag meaning one lap left, and then the checker meaning it's over. Yeah. But you can have multiple overtimes if on the green white. If you don't make it to a certain part of the track on that white flag, they'll, hey, redo it. Like I say, it was a crash that happens, right? Like regardless if it was at the front or in the back, if a crash happens before you get a certain part of that white flag done, then they'll restart it again and have another oh, green wow. right checker. It's so, like like a halfway point. Typically. Yeah, it's, I think it's like 75% of okay. it because they're saying, okay, if they crash and you're past this point, they'll still be able to finish the race without having to worry about getting into any mess coming back around. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like if you crash on the checker, they're not worried about it because it's like, hey, that they're not coming back around there. So as soon as they cross here, it's over with. So that's kind of why it works like that. So that's what the overtime element was. So it was exciting because now you talk about Harvick and Hamlin who had a lead. Uh, Matt Kenzick, he was in third. Shout out to Matt. He, he pulled a Debo. So when I say that, he was retired this season. He was driving a okay. 42 car from McDonald's. <laughs> he was retired, right? <laughs> And he wasn't going to come back. But remember when I told you there was a NASCAR driver that uh, doing the, the virtual race and said the racial slur, he ended up getting kicked out, dropped off his sponsors. They called Matt and said, look, we need you to come back and drive. So he came back and started driving. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's how his switch situation worked out. But I mean, dude, he was balling. Like I said, he ended up finishing, I think it was second yesterday. But for a while, he was sitting in third and was catching up to my man Harvick. I was like, yo, this is nuts. Well, they were right there. They were head to head whenever yeah. they started the overtime. Mm -hmm. But then but, oh, it was beautiful, bro. He got Harvick got way ahead of yeah. Kenseth so, to finish it out. So what happens? At, like, why did they give an explanation as yeah. to why he was just able to no, go so, like so, that? So the technique was this. So traditionally, like when they're about to start on a restart, right? You'll see they'll talk about lane position. Some guys want to be in the inside lane. Some guys want the outside lane. But what Harvick was saying was, I need whoever I end up getting in front of, I want them to push me. So it ended up, I think it was his teammate that he ended up getting in front of. And he was like, I'm not going to hit the gas until he pushes me. Now, when you're on the restart, what? but when you're on the restart, <laughs> though, but this is how it works. So when you're on the restart, because you're in, you're the, you were the leader, that other car can't go until you hit the gas and accelerate. So he knows like, yo, I want the, I'm not going to go until he hits my, until he hits my bumper. And we saw like, uh, another car I did it earlier. Actually, Denny Hamlin had did it earlier and passed guys. And then Harvick did it as well earlier in the race and passed some guys as well. So it was like Talladega Nights almost yeah, like the, yeah, the yeah. movie, man. In terms of you see him hitting them, boom, 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 and then he hits the gas off of that. So it's kind of like giving him an extra, uh, extra push. And that's why he was able to like literally burst in front of everybody like that and not even have it close. Whereas if he doesn't do that, well, now he might. I mean, it would have been a lot closer coming out of that first turn or it could have been neck and neck, which would have gave more favor to Matt Kenseth because he was on the inside of the track. So that part was cool. But the thing that's unique, though, when you're talking about the team element 
of NASCAR, they were saying that that's the only part where you would help him. Like, because you still, they, they were saying like, so say he didn't push him the way he needed to get pushed. And it was close after that turn. He Does he basically have to push him? Well, this is the thing. You, it's, you don't have to, but it's the courtesy because we're teammates. You give me the push because I'm winning. If they were further back, it Well, you were matter. saying he wouldn't, he wouldn't go until he right. hit his back anyway, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but the thing was, they had already communicated that through the walkie talkies. Like, yo, let him know I'm not going until I get the push. Yeah. So when he pushed him, he's like, all right, cool. After that, the teammate's job is done. Now, if they would, if it would have been close coming out of the second turn, you expect that teammate to go try to win the race. So it's not like, hey, give him the push and, hey, I, I'm supposed to just sit back and let him win. Like, no, you give him the push as a courtesy. But other than that, you're trying to win the race. But just because he was in the lead, that's why you do it like that. So that's why I worked out the way I worked out. But it was pretty dope, though, man. Because like, even with the push, if uh, Matt Kenseth, the guy who was behind him, if he would have pushed him, then they could have still been neck and neck. And any of those guys after that could have had an opportunity to pass So him. he just got lucky his teammate was Absolutely. Him. Yeah. Wow. Like, it was literally just that fluky, bro. And for this to be what I heard, it's the it's like the Masters. In, oh yeah, this is a big NASCAR. deal. This is yeah, like, this is a big. Deal, I heard man. at least the announcer say he said this is the the greatest yeah. race, and you know I, I yeah. think it's he said the history of the world. Or yeah, just because the history behind it, okay. because you obviously have the Indy Five Hundred, and you still have like the the history. When you look at the track, you see the bricks, which is why they call it the Brickyard, and all those things. Everybody that's that's one that you think about the elite racers, whether it's NASCAR or Indy that have won on that track. So that's why it's such a big deal. And for Harvick, man, the fact that he won it last year and then turned around and won it again this year is crazy. This is third time winning there, man. Has he, where's he at all time amongst NASCAR drivers? Hall of Famer. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I would have to research it more to see if he's considered like a Jeff Gordon. Like Jeff Gordon would have been the equivalent to like how LeBron came in right. young and dominated early and, and had a crazy career. Or is he like a Mark Martin? Or is he like a a Wall Trip? You know I mean, like it's so many different like people that I personally don't know how they rank them like that. Right, right. Like who's like the Michael Jordan? Like I'm wondering stuff, right you know? now if people are starting to bump him up in some of these rankings right now, I think just so, yeah. ba- just based off his season. But yeah. then if he finishes with the championship, I'm sure he'll get bumped up. Even oh, absolutely. More. Well, and the thing is, he's won multiple championships, and this is his fourth win this season. So that ties him with Denny Hamlin in, in, in terms of having the most and he, wins. And I just checked too. We talked about this uh, whenever we were doing the remote podcast. Mm-hmm. He's way ahead of all oh, these the points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially, uh, you said Hamlin's got the other yeah. one with the four. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's especially ahead of him. So. Yeah. Well, and Hamlin, because he didn't finish now, takes a hit. Mm-hmm. So all of those things, I mean, it, it's a big deal. Like in terms of uh, in terms of Harvick, like I said, Harvick's a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer. And it's more so just when is he going to stop? But he's, he's hinted to that he wants to drive until his 50s. He's like early 40s right now. Which is like awesome because you know I got my gear, so I'm at least good for the next couple of years. And I already have already been eyeing me a new cat. You know how like you know how you you got whoa, whoa, no, 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 whoa, no. And, and so so like you know how you got the NBA right? You had LeBron because right? we've talked about this. Yeah. Yes, we have talked about. So this. we have LeBron, and then it's like okay, when LeBron leaves, who's going to be our new guy? So the Xfinity series is like the NCAA. <laughs> okay, so they're, so not, competing they're not competing in the competing. same level. Yeah, yet. they're not the okay. same level just yet. But he's like in the next. Like when the new wave of people come, he's going to be a part of that. So I've already been eyeing this cat for the past, <laughs> it's probably been the past six or seven races I've been watching him. Okay. And I was like, okay, I kind of like this cat. Like he's he nice with it, man. He's winning. I'm like, okay, you know what? Whenever Harvick does retire, that's going to be my guy. Cause I feel like it'd be kind of weird to just jump from Harvick to say, oh, now I'm going to go with Chase Elliott or I'm going to go with uh, Ryan Newman or somebody like that. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just not, cause they're, it's, it's already, a generation thing. Yeah. It, that'd be like, hey, we're, all right, LeBron retired. Let's, let's go Giannis now. Like, nah. Or, or, or let's go Kawhi. Like, no, I need, I need, yeah. it's got to be a new generation, a new wave for me, man. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Because you have Jordan. Mm hmm. And then you pick your guy. Is it, is right. it Kobe? Right. Are you picking Iverson? See, LeBron? for me, I went Jordan, then I went Iverson, then from Iverson, I went to LeBron. Okay. Like, that's how I went. But Yeah, because Iverson's run went until like 2010, maybe yeah. when he got traded to the Nuggets. You then it like, kind of went downhill. Yeah. Even though, I mean, those teams were no, kind of interesting. They were good, yeah. They got better when they traded him, though. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, man, that was around the time when obviously LeBron was coming in. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go LeBron now because that transition is smooth. We're over. We're good now. Yeah, because he was, yeah. he still had his run with Cleveland at the beginning mm-hmm. where you're really not expecting much from him right. in terms of big winning. But then his collapse with the Celtics, a couple mm-hmm. of those series, I, losing to Orlando, you're like, all right, once he yeah. get, it's time to start winning now. And Absolutely. Then, 
And then that's when went to the heat, and that's oh, when you can make changer. your decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, Absolutely, are you a bro. LeBron guy or not? This is yeah. this is kind of like a breaking you either point. Stand, you standing by him or you're not, man. Which one are you going to do? <laughs> and I doubled down. I said, all right, man, give me the six. Let's roll with it. Yeah, so for me, man, so my my other guy, when he does make the jump from the Xfinity, his name is Chase Briscoe. He actually okay. has five wins in the Xfinity series right now. He's been kicking some butt. I was also looking at a cat, uh, Jeb Burton. I thought he was another guy. I was like, you know what? I know you. Uh, I know your uncle. You know what I mean? So I, in terms of war, but oh, right, right, right. I was like, okay, I can see that. I like that. <laughs> but he crashes a lot. And I'm like, ah, I'm not really feeling the crashing like that. Whereas with Chase Brisk, I'm like, you know what? You don't crash. You drive good. You're winning. I'm going to keep my eye on you. But for right now, though, we, we stand with the money team, baby. Kevin Harvey, like I said, man, he's killing it in the points right now. He got his fourth win on the season, which ties him for the lead in terms of most wins this year. And, man, he's just he's on fire, man. He's been running extremely well ever since. This is wild, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts, bro. <laughs> this is wild. We start talking NASCAR. It's nuts, bro. The guy you pick is just going off. Like, hey, who would have 